uh, or supposed to be. Unfortunately, there is a lot of dogmatism that creeps into science now because you have uh, the cult of the expert, it's been called. <laughs> um, and the problem with that, of course, is that you have uh, science being fragmented into multiple disciplines. And it, it gets to the point where uh, the disciplines can't talk to each other in the same language. And in fact, even within a discipline, I have found at seminars that um, somebody who specializes in one area within a discipline has to explain themselves to their colleagues. Yeah, yeah. So there's this sort of breakdown in communication, which is a, a significant problem. And I should point out that the electric universe grew out of an interdisciplinary approach, which is not taught in any university on Earth. In other words, uh, we look at the possibility that the earliest recollections of mankind have something to tell us about astronomy, which we can use to test ideas and propose experiments today. Um, and to also to uh, save NASA a lot of money in asking questions that we really don't need to ask and to ask ones that we do need to ask. Hmm. That's so, you know, that, that that's the whole thing, that uh, the Electric Universe tries to bring things down to common language, common sense and engineering principles. I mean, there would be people out there who, who would argue and, and claim that the the compartmentalization of of these scientific principles are in place for a a reason actually uh, i don't know if you would agree with that wall it, it seems to me like that is the case that it's almost designed for a hierarchy if you will to gather all the knowledge at the top and and keep the um, the uh, individual researchers kind of uh, uninformed at, at the lower levels uh, because that's what's happening anyway what do you think about all of that wall I think that's, that is one of the consequences. Uh, the language used in scientific articles is so obscure and obtuse that uh, you really have to work hard to try and understand what's being uh, said. Uh, sometimes uh, the people who do the editorials and so on for Nature and Science manage to cut through uh, all of this um, uh, jargon and provide you with some insights. But it makes it very difficult for anyone to get uh, the big picture. And when you're doing science, I think it's important to get the big picture first so that you have some idea of how uh, your ideas fit with other disciplines. Mm. It, right now, you know, you can have a problem in one discipline. You don't tell the people next door who are working in another discipline that you've got these problems. And so those other people assume that answers they get from you are uh, pretty much uh, signed, sealed and delivered and you can take them as gospel, hmm. when in fact there are a huge number of caveats and uh, concerns about um, the so-called facts. And this is one of the things that I find quite often, that if you... I get referred to papers that are supposed to prove that the electric universe is, is completely wrong or misguided. Mm -hmm. When I go and read those papers, I find that the certainty with which I've been attacked has is not reflected in those documents. In fact, they tend to support my view that uh, <laughs> these things are still very much unknown and uh, under still under investigation. Hmm. Uh, one thing there that has happened then, obviously, is that if we go back into history a little bit and mention William Herschel again, he he talked about the electric effects and so forth, and, and he collaborated with uh, Michael Faraday, for instance, uh, and, yes. and, and it wasn't really until our knowledge about uh, electromagnetism and uh, electrical engineering came onto the scene that we started to connect these dots, so to speak. But why do you think that mm. the electric universe theory have stayed off the map in terms of our educational system? Because it seems to me that the the, the older people who studied this were kind of on the ball, so to speak. That they were heading somewhere with this theory, but then something happened. Do you know what that yes. was? Uh, what, what happened there? Well, it was an accident of history, I, I think, and that's what I've written in the last uh, article I've just written for my website called Our Misunderstood Son. <clears throat> and um, Herschel says, uh, said in a letter to Michael Faraday, who uh, at the time was uh, the experimentalist working on electricity and magnetism, uh, William Herschel said, We stand on the verge of a vast cosmical discovery such as nothing hitherto imagined can compare with. And he was talking about a link that they discovered between magnetic storms on Earth and sunspots on the sun. So 
here was uh, an intuitive leap which was on the right track. Uh, the Electric Universe uh, shows how these things uh, actually work. Um, and as uh, somebody pointed out, back in those days and up until the beginning of the 20th century, a lot of scientists were what you might call eminent outsiders. They were not actually trained in the thing that they became famous for. And I think in that article I point out that um, uh, Herschel um, was in some other, or both Herschel and Faraday began in completely different uh, pursuits, mm. but ended up uh, the doyens of the uh, Royal Society in their particular fields of astronomy and uh, physics. Mm. Nowadays, anyone who tried to do the same thing uh, from outside of discipline would uh, be pounced upon immediately, and they'd never become members of the Royal Society. Hmm. Well, so th this uh, this uh, idea of um, the Renaissance scholar, I think, has gone out the window, and I think that's a great pity. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're losing so much because of it, but uh, that's why we're grateful for the kind of work that you, uh, uh, David, and... and uh, many other people as well who are on the track in terms of the electric universe. And I think it's a, a fascinating theory. And, and just by reading it from a non-scientific point of view, because I have no background in, in, in terms of science, I'm just very interested in it. It makes more sense to me mm -hmm. because it answers a lot, a lot of these uh, questions that just that you mentioned before that, that regular science or the, the mainstream theories have to uh, basically these things that they have to make up in terms of to explain gravity and, and uh, dark matter and things that you mentioned before. And uh, yes, w w what do you think then are some of the bil biggest, I guess, fallacies in terms, in terms of that? Is, is it our lack of understanding when it comes to gravity and, and also this in injection of, of dark matter or is there anything else uh, big, so to speak, out there that, that are uh, specks in the, in the eyes of mainstream uh, uh, science? Well, I think one of the popular ones is black holes. And uh, we have another dissident Australian uh, scientist um, who has done the hard work in the mathematics and pointed out that there are some serious mistakes and made and that black holes cannot exist even according to the mathematics. Now, common sense suggests that it's a simple mistake like dividing by zero uh, because if you try and concentrate matter uh, in a smaller and smaller radius or volume, as you approach zero, of course, the density goes up to infinity and this is more or less what you are talking about with a black hole. Um, there is no necessity for a black hole um, the evidence for it is given as the outpourings from the centres of active galaxies where you see these huge jets going from millions of light years out into space, uh, funneling huge amounts of energy and matter away from the centre of the galaxy where the supposed black hole is supposed to be uh, gobbling everything in sight. Mm -hmm. All of the activity in the centre of an active galaxy can be explained in terms of electrical engineering and plasma physics. The problem is, and this is the historical accident, the understanding of plasma physics and the kinds of experiments required to be done to understand galaxies were not done until uh, long after the standard model of the sun was in place. The, and uh, that accident is uh, detailed in um, that article I mentioned, Our Misunderstood Sun. Mm. The important uh, issue is, of course, that if we don't understand the sun, then we don't understand any star in the universe, and we can't go uh, talking about the first few uh, seconds of uh, the existence of the universe when we don't understand anything about what we're looking at. <laughs> so um, this is why I say we don't even know enough to ask the right questions right now to answer the big questions in cosmology. You know, where did we come from? Where does life begin? And all this kind of thing. We can't even ask the right questions about where would we expect to find life in the universe other than on Earth. <laughs> That's just incredible. And uh, it's, it's very fascinating in terms of the, the sun as well. I've been, uh, you know, keeping an eye on this. And, and uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about you know, solar flares and, and uh, coronal mass ejections and, and what those are. There, there are certain expectations that comes from uh, NASA and, and other uh, scientific groups who are studying the sun in terms of what they call the 11-year uh, uh, cycle and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but right now, as far as I've understood, we